at Price Chapel. We are so glad you're with us today and happy Pride. Today, typically, yeah. Typically, today would have been the day of all the LA festivities and they'll probably all return next year, but whoever you are, wherever you are, I hope you're celebrating who God created you to be. So uh, as we start the service, I do have a one minute clip of a, interface, of a, a prayer or a statement I'm making at the interface service that's happening at noon. Uh, or at one o'clock, it'll be online, but just so you guys can see it uh, now, I'm gonna have it shown at this time. Maybe. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Reverend Joel Wall, the founding pastor of Christ Chapel of Valley. And Happy Pride, everyone. I'm Reverend Gerald Walls, the founding pastor of Christ Chapel of Valley in the NoHo Arts District of Los Angeles, and also the co-chair for LAQUIC, LA Queer Interfaith Clergy Council. And we trust that Pride is a special day, a special time for you. And as we celebrate Pride, there's a song that always comes to mind. It's in the Psalms that says, I praise you because of the wonderful way you created me. Everything you do is marvelous, and I know it full well. It's great to understand and come to the realization that we are marvelous, that we are created as God intended for us to be. So as you celebrate pride, remember who you are, stand tall in your faith, and continue to move out as you continue to be who you were created to be, because everything created is marvelous. God bless you. probably heard restrictions are changing on Tuesday so a lot of the restrictions things that we've had to do will go away um, we don't have to worry about capacity so you can those of you who have been concerned about registering just show up uh, we're here and things are going to get closer to normal however because of the ruling that still those who are not vaccinated have to wear masks we don't want there to be the haves and the have-nots so we're going to ask those if while you're in service if you'll wear mask and uh, we'll address that as time goes of how long we need to do that. But for now, it's just consideration for those who may not be vaccinated. But as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, I just wanna offer the service to God and let's go to God. Lord, we are so thankful that we can have a time of celebrating who we are, who you created us to be, and just give us that understanding that as we reach out into our world, that we have a purpose and a plan. You have a plan for us. And God, just minister to us, minister to our hearts, and we ask that you work in every area and every life. In Jesus' name, amen. And just a reminder, we will be taking prayer requests at the end of the uh, message. So those of you online, if you could put those in the comments section within the next 20 minutes, uh, those can have time to be sent over to me, and that way we'll be able to, they're snickering about 20 minutes in the back. <laughs> But about, I do go longer than 20 minutes. But anyway, nonetheless, uh, we want your prayer request because we know it's important for us to be able to pray for one another and lift each other up. So at this time, we're going to turn the service over to our music team who will lead us out in song.
Assurance that we are loved by God. So thank you, Chris and Melissa, for that song. And looking forward to we're gonna start hopefully working some things back where we got some hybrid service type of things going on where there'll be videos but also live and hopefully uh we'll start seeing more and more of our um, music team getting able to be together with us. So we're excited about that and the days ahead. So seeing this restrictions lessening is gonna be better and better for us. <clears throat> And since today would have been our Pride Sunday anyway, I decided I'd stay with the Pride message and kind of and go with that same thought. And we're, we're seeing society opening up. We're seeing us get more and more established in the space. And we need to look, what is our next steps? Where is God taking us in the future? And, and I've titled this Rise Up. And I hope we're ready to rise up for the challenge because it is going to be a new challenge. We're in a new era, a new day. Things are going to be different in society. Are we ready to face it? And it's time to seek what God wants for our church and what God wants for our life and where our next steps will be for all of us. And, and I know personally I've been praying, God, we need that fresh anointing. We've had a year and a half apart. We need that fresh anointing of where are you taking us? What do you want to do? How can we work together? Because we know you have a purpose and a plan for all of us. In the last few years, we have seen more and more churches and um, being accepting of LGBTQ community, which is great. But we also know there's a lot of the evangelical churches who aren't there yet. And I mean, I'm encouraged by some of the stories I hear, some of those who are at least looking at the topic. But we know that there's still this concern that we may not be ready to open the door to LGBT, they'll, uh, be LGBTQ. They will allow people to come in and attend. They'll be glad to take your offering, but don't expect to serve God. And those are the things it's like, well, that's still second class citizen and no one's a second class citizen in the kingdom of God. That's why our church is still needed. That's why we need to have a safe place for those who are not just LGBTQ, but also allies. Allies have been kicked out of churches because of their support. So thank God that we have this place that we can gather. And even on our own building, it's walking up today, and I notice we've, uh, there's one spot on the side that always gets, or occasionally gets graffitied, and we got a new one, and it said, repent, and they prayed the blood of Christ over us, and I thought, repent means change the way you think. We are continuing to change the way we think about God, allowing God to work in our life, and we can all use the blood of Christ put over us. So I thought, well, okay, well, at least they're praying for our church. That's a good thing. It's a good start. And this past week, though, there are those I uh, read a story about a pastor who struggled with depression. And not only was he dealing with depression, he was hurt by the church because they were saying, as a pastor, you should be able to overcome depression. And then he also recently came out as queer. Sadly, the attacks against him have been so strong, he took his life last week. But he wrote before all this happened, he said, do you have any idea how exhausting it is to perform your whole life for people who will only fully accept you if you deny anything about yourself that doesn't meet their approval? He further wrote, for the past three decades, I've lived a lie, hoping to appease a group of people who only support you if you follow their rules and live up to their unfair and unrealistic expectations. When you hear this, it make, it's a sad commentary of where people are and what they think about the church. That's why we have to make a difference. That's why we have to rise up and help those that are struggling with this idea. Can they be who God created them to be? And, and also in his case with the depression, I and, and ask you just to pray for his family and for the ministry that he had begun for those who were struggling with depression. But we need to prepare ourselves for where God is taking us. We need to be ready to see the new challenges ahead. And I know many of us grew up in evangelical backgrounds, and we know the drama and trauma that can come from that. I grew up Foursquare, and thankfully my experience wasn't a bad one. I was never blatantly condemned, 
shunned, but not condemned. And it was one of those things that, that you kind of like struggled and thankful that I know some others who had worse experiences, but God is there for us. And as uh, growing up in that denomination, we know that 1 Corinthians 12 was one of their passages they liked, and it was about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And anytime you start talking about the gifts, people start getting a little nervous because we, those of us who grew up in that environment, we've seen it. We've seen those who have I have gone to the extreme and got carried away. But, you know, sometimes when people get carried away in the spirit, it's encouraging for the rest of us. It kind of flows over to us. We've seen those who have used it to uh, their own advantages. And so it makes us a little leery. But there are still gifts that God has given us, and they are things that can help us. And one of the gifts is the word of knowledge. And, and whenever I was graduating, that was 39 years ago, from my theological training, there was a pastor named Dick Mills who his ministry was to give a word of the Lord to the people and that's based on 1 Corinthians 12. And I've always been skeptical. And it's one of those things of, okay, I've seen it abused. Can I trust what he's going to say? So he was going through, was talking to, praying over all the seniors and giving a word from the Lord and it came my turn. And whenever I walked up to him, he said, I just had a flash on your life. And I'm thinking, what has he seen? What does he know? And then he went on to say, he said, at 10 days old, you were offered to the Lord. And then he gave me the scriptures that he had for me. And those verses I actually still have, and we'll review them periodically and just see how God has fulfilled those in my life and how sometimes the fulfillment changes. But I never knew about being dedicated at 10 days old. So I was still like uncertain. So I called my parents and said, what happened when I was 10 days old? And dad thought for a minute, he said, well, that would have been your first Sunday in church. I'm pretty sure we prayed over you and gave you to God that day. It was the confirmation I needed to know that what he said was true. And that's where we are in our own life. When someone tells you God said, just because they use the word God said, you still need to test it and have that confirmation. There's things that people have said that have felt right and you just know it. There's other times that people say, well, God told me this about you. And it's like, that's not even close to true. And then there's those other times you just need the Holy Spirit to bring that assurance. But as he gave that verse, one of them he gave me was from Esther. And it was a, a great story. If you haven't read Esther, you should. But it's a beautiful story about uh, the salvation of Israel. And as it begins, it starts with a king who had put off the, on this great banquet. Everything was going great. He got into a drunken state. And in his drunken state, he decided he wanted to show off to his fellow officials how beautiful his wife is. So he ordered her to come and dance for them. Now, first lesson, don't make a decision when you're drunk. The second one is, never underestimate the power of a strong woman. So this woman was, she, she, did, she declined. If she was a dignified woman, she wasn't going to do that. That caused a stir. Because now you got these officials, who were all men, of course, at that time. It was a very patriarchal society. And so they're like, they're upset because if his wife can tell him no, their wives are going to tell them no. And they just can't have it. And we even see that today. When someone in power and control, when people start threatening that position of authority, they start making stupid laws or hindering other laws so that others cannot advance. So here we see this happening. And, and so what they have decided is that this particular queen should be removed from her position. So through pressure, he had to denounce his wife, Vasti, as queen. Some believe she was put to death. Others believe she had just banished from the kingdom. Either way, she would have been either destitute and homeless or, or deceased. But as time went on, he started missing having his queen with him. And so what do they decide to do? Well, there's a lot of beautiful women in the kingdom. Let's go find all the beautiful women, bring them together. You'll get to spend the night with them. They'll become part of your harem. And that one you really favor, that one can become queen. He's a dude. It sounded like a great idea. He followed through with it. And so, sure enough, he brought the, the people in. If one becomes queen, then, of course, their whole family is going to be well taken care of. They're going to have clout. They won't be taxed. Things will be good. And as we also know, marriage was not about love at that time, that period. It was about status. It was about being able to be protected. So Esther's cousin knew that he could not continue to keep Esther forever. Esther's parents had, had died. We don't know the story of how. She was an orphan. He was taking her. And, and as we even know, we love our family, our extended family. But if they're more around more 
within a few days, it starts getting a little, okay, it's time for you to go on. So evidently he was at that place of Esther, I love you, but you need someone to take care of you forever. So he encouraged her to go sign up to be one of these people got brought before the king. Because even if she becomes a concubine, she's still going to be taken care of for the rest of her life. But as God would have it, the king fell for her and he named her queen. And what we see is even though it's not the most ideal situation, God uses culture and the things that happen to help perform the work that he needs to have done. So as this story progresses, many of you know the story of Haman. Haman became a very powerful man in the kingdom, and he was able to get it, whereas he walked, went through the town, people were to bow before him and honor him. And then there was Mordecai. Mordecai would not, Esther's cousin, he would not bow before anyone but God. And Haman, he saw all the people bowing but the one. And that one, he got obsessed over. Why won't he bow to me? But we really can't, I mean, Haman kind of shows human nature. We can have all kinds of people think we're loving and great and wonderful, but that one person complain and all of our focus goes to that one person. So he goes after this one person and, and he decides that he's going to get rid of Mordecai. Then he finds out Mordecai is a foreigner and he was Jewish, so he thought, I'm going to expel all of them. Why should any of them live if one is going to defy me? So he gets the king to put this edict that all the Jewish people in the 127 provinces should be put to death. Now, thankfully, in our country, we won't have to worry about laws about LGBT people being put to death, but we know that things are made that make it difficult. We also know that whether there's laws or not, there are LGBTQ people who are being killed for who they are. The trans community is being hit really hard these days, and so we need to be Again, rise up, do what we can to protect our brothers and sisters. We know it's not just for LGBTQ. We know other races and religions also feel the attacks, but today being pride focusing on LGBTQ. But it just shows us that God is concerned and God sees this happening and God raises up deliverers. God watches out for the oppressed. He continues to take care of them. So here they are about to be oppressed. They are about to be put to death for who they were. And Mordecai, in his state of seeking God, he puts on sackcloth. It was a, a sign of mourning, but also a sign of commitment to God. <clears throat> Very humbling. Well, Queen Esther hears about it, that he's wearing sackcloth, so she doesn't know what's going on. She's safe in the king kingdom. Everything, she's in the castle. Everything's great. So she sends him clothes. And he sends back and says what, tells her what's going on and says, this edict has gone out. Your people are in danger. And then we see this great verse in Esther 4, 14. He says, for if you keep silent at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter, but you and your father's household will perish. But who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. That was the verse that Dick Mills gave to me. You've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. And it just lets us know that, again, whenever he gave these verses, he told us, now, whenever I give a verse to someone, no, you can claim that verse for you because it's the Bible, it's available to all people. But that verse was particular. And so here we see that, that in our own life, God will call us out. You have been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. We can't be afraid to speak out. In the uh, current uh, English version, it says, it could be that you were made a queen for such a time as this. Of course, as I read that translation, I laugh thinking, Dick Mills really did have a flash on my life. <laughs> but it is a great story of it showing God working deliverance through an unsuspecting individual. Someone that you wouldn't think would be the one to rise up. Hammond had planned to destroy everyone who were enemies of the Jews. And, and again, if you hadn't read the story, you should. But the verse about being brought into the kingdom for such a time as this just lets us know that we are being included. That we are in this time, in this era, for a purpose and a plan to bring others into the kingdom of God. So I've got another clip, and this one isn't necessarily about pride, but it shows what people have done at such a time as this and how we can do simple things for such a time as this.
but it's still showing us that we can be proud of those who stepped up. And it shows us that such a time as this doesn't mean it's got to be a grand view, a grand thing you have to do. They did their jobs. They did what they were able to do, and we have all benefited from it. So in the kingdom of God, as we do what God has called us to do, we will see that we can be those who help others who are in need. The LGBT community for too long has been in trouble. They've had people out to get them. They've been in harm ways, and what uh, in harmful ways. But uh, what's sad is that most of this comes from religion. A few years back, I was trying to get us on the teen LGBTQ resource directory, and and they responded back and said, "We don't include religious organizations." And I wrote them back, and I'm like, "Why not? We many of us have been through that experience of having unaccepting." People at church get rid of, come against us. Why can't we be included? And they said, religion has hurt way too many people. We refuse to allow them to be in our directory. And I thought, how horrible can that be? That a resource guide to help LGBTQ teens will not allow for religion because it hurts too many people. It shows us we've got a great task ahead of us. We are ones that need to be there to help people see and rise up and let them know that there is a place of God's love, grace, and acceptance. We're back in the NoHo community after God took us away for a little while in our wilderness, it feels like, and came back to where we belong, to what area we need to be. And so we need to rise up. We need to be prepared. What can we do? What simple things can we do to reach our community? This past week, we uh, had the vaccine clinic here, and uh, it was great to see. It was open up to the community. A lot of the community members came through. And one of the people who were working here, she came, pulled me aside, and she said, I've got this friend that I'm talking to and trying to help. And she won't allow her sister to see her kids because her sister's a lesbian. What should I say? And it gave me opportunity to share some things, and, and it, I don't know if I gave her enough information, but at least she knew where to go, and she'll know where to go ask other questions from even after that. Also this week, we received a phone call. Someone must have seen our, our uh, rainbow sign on the front and called, and, and the first thing they said when Ken answered was, I'm a lesbian. And Ken said, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then the response was, what should I do about it? And Ken said, I'm not sure what you're asking, but if you're looking for validation, know that God loves you and accepts you no matter who you love. And the woman says, okay, thank you. You made my day. And I'm up. <laughs> That's all it took. And hopefully we'll see her at church one day. But it's those things that we know that people need to know the message that we have. And too often we think, well, we got a sign on the building. They'll show up. Or we'll just open the doors. They'll come. We should know after a few years, people don't just come because we're here. They need to be told. And as we keep opening our doors, we want people to know God's love, acceptance is here for them. We need to be th thinking about the protection of our LGBT community. And as we see from Esther, the, the thing that she taught us was that one person can give hope. That she was able to give hope. It wasn't a big step she had to take. Here, her people were in despair, but Mordecai saw hope in her and reached out to her and said, Esther, you need to go before the king. Here he is in sackcloth. He's worried. He's concerned about this edict. He's praying to God, but he knows that prayer is needed, but that there needs to be some action. So in Esther, he sees this ray of hope, and it wasn't a grand gesture. She just had to go before the king. The king. Sometimes we think we can aren't doing enough, but sometimes just that comment. We pass people every day who need to know God loves them and accepts them who they created to be. Those we can talk to. There's a great passage in Romans 15, 13, just reminds us. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I love that verse. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Abound in hope. That is what we are to offer, what we need to let other people see. And it, again, small gestures can make a big difference. And we know God is greater than all this. God can help encourage that hope and encourage people as they seek God. 
And as we help others find that hope in God, it brings joy and peace. When we have hope, we have a joy and peace that normally isn't there. It's when we lose our hope that that joy and peace seems to go away as well. And whenever we start seeing people attack for who they are and we start seeing it come from people who shouldn't be attacking, we know it's going to take the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit's power within us. And just as Esther had the power of, of God with her to do that little task of going before the king, God is with us as we do our task. There are many in our community who are seeking hope. And for many, they can't go to their houses of worship to find that hope. Again, that's why we're here. And I get to thinking, had I not found Christ Chapel Long Beach, where would I have ended up? What would have happened? The denomination I was working for was already starting to hear rumors about who I was. There were things that could have turned out ugly. ugly. But God, in his grace and mercy, started helping us to start moving forward. Had Brian Weddle start hounding me about a Bible study. And then between him and Jeff, we started the Bible study and it started to grow. To where then when that group of people, of about 17 people who were trying to squeeze into Brian's little apartment, when we started meeting, it all started to grow. And through that, God began to work and do mighty things among all of us that we be able, was able to see God take us where we are just continued and what was amazing as well is that after 10 months the church had grown to the place where they could match the salary i had with the denomination so that i could quit 10 months and you've taken care of me ever since so thank you for that but it's just showing us that that god provided that that means and as soon as that happened and when i gave my resignation one of the officials came to me and said you beat us to the punch we were looking for your replacement already because we know about your life god protects God takes care of us. God gives us hope. So we need to be that hope to those around us. But not just have a hope that, that and, and we see that glimmer of hope, but we also have work to do. We have to rise up. There are things that we have to take action for. And when we take action, too often in our day and time, we see it as political. But this isn't about political. This is about action for the kingdom of God. Doing what God has called us to do. Yes, it does mean standing up for what's right. And that can sometimes look like it's political. And just so people know with the um, IRS and churches, that churches can stand for issues and causes. They're not supposed to stand for a candidate, but we've seen that line crossed horribly the last few years. But ca causes we can stand for. That's why we stood up for equality of marriage. Those things we can do. Those are things that we should do. When we start seeing things of right versus wrong, those are the things we make a stand for. Not politics, but rights. What is right? It's a kingdom of God issue. And Esther could have said, you know what, I'm, I'm a woman. We're not allowed in politics. I'm not going to get involved. What happens, happens. She had to take a step. She didn't impose herself on the king's business. She just did what she was able to do. And sometimes we just do the little we can do and we see a difference. It is more than just opening the doors. It is more than a banner on the building. They still say word of mouth is the strongest outreach for any church. So are we letting people know there is a place of hope? Are we speaking as she had to speak up to the king when she could have been put to death? There was a law. If the king didn't call for you, you weren't allowed just to go make your presence known to him. And even though she was queen, if she went to him and he didn't extend the, his scepter to her, she could have been killed at that moment. But she was willing to do it to bring hope to her people. We are to present that hope. We do everything we can. We take those next steps and we follow what God has asked us. And in Micah 6, 8, we're told what it is that God wants from us. The Lord God has told us what is right and what he demands. See that justice is done. Let mercy be your first concern and humbly obey your God. Those are the keys of what we are supposed to do to please God. Are we doing everything we can to see justice is done? Now, a lot of times we do have to weigh out what those things are because with social media and things, people will give you the extreme of something and expect you to follow it. There may be a part of where justice is here 
and they want to take you to here, that's where we have to sometimes weigh out. What is the point of what's going to bring justice to someone? And then it is to be merciful. Can we be merciful to others who may not agree with us? Sometimes that's hard because as long as people agree with us and we're preaching to the choir, we're great. But what about those who don't agree with us? Can we be merciful to them and trust that God will help them come to a realization of what is right and just? And of course, the most important thing, humbly obey God. Will we humbly obey God and what God has called us to do, even if it's not such a grandstand step? But back to Esther in verse 4, where it says, you've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. It just reminds us that from the foundation of the world, God had a plan for each one of us. That he put you in this generation, in this city, in this place, in this church, to reach this community. And when we realize that, we realize God has a role for all of us. And I'm thankful for those who do, whether it's a, a small task or a major task, it helps us to do the job God has called us to do. And too often, though, in our society, we've got it where, well, someone else will do it. If I don't do it, someone else will. But God may be asking you to be that someone. God may be wanting you to step up when you'd rather not, when you'd rather just sit back in your royal position. And just say, okay, I'm fine with everyone else doing it. And God said, no, you may need to go forward and do it. And we look at the idea of a royal position, and we realize that was also brought to us by Peter in 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. He says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. That's all we do, declare God's praises. And once you were not a people... But now you're a people of God. Once you've not received mercy, but now you've received mer mercy. Now, as we know the history of that verse, that he was talking to Gentiles. And the titles he was giving were titles that were given to Israel. They were the chosen people. They were the royal priesthood. They were the holy nation. They belonged to God. And now he's saying through Christ, that has extended to the Gentile audience as well, which is most of us here. So we start seeing that that started expanding and God continues to expand to reach other people who have been made to feel less than. And how often has the LGBT community been made to feel less than? In Florida, they had lights on a bridge that rainbow lights in honor of the month that got shut off because the people of piety didn't like it. What does that say to our brothers and sisters who are LGBTQ? Now there's a story of a, another baker in Texas who customers quit sending their orders and pulled their orders because they posted rainbow cookies with a, sign, with a note that said, more love, less hate, happy pride to all our LGBTQ friends, all lovers in, of cookies and happiness are welcome here. And people were trying to shut down their business. What I love about their community though is the community rally. And there were lines around the block to buy the cookies. We can do that. Those are things that we can do when we see actions that seem hateful. I'm like, why would they do that? Why is that such a big deal? And we start allowing the love of God to flow and let them know that we can't do fix everything, but we can start with the small things and we can do it in the name of God. And as we start looking at our community, we know that, that we are a chosen people. We love the idea of being royal, but a royal priesthood, meaning we're servants of God, and yes, holy. That's one of the things people talk about is they don't see us as a holy people, but God does. The Apostle Paul declares that we have these roles in Christ now. So as an affirming church of the LGBT community, and thank God for the allies who support us, this is what we rise up to do. This is what we rise up to let the world know. And yes, as the world opens up, we will be having festivals again. And we will be needing to make ourselves known. We will have to find ways. What can we do to let people know that there is a place, a safe place for people to come to know that God is there for them? Now for Esther, what she did, even though she knew it was dangerous for her to go to the king, she first fasted and prayed. And that's where we began. We start with fasting and praying of saying, God, what do you need us to do? And then you take the message. 
God will open those doors as we need. But we have to be willing to work. Have to be willing to do it. And because of Esther's faith and willingness to step out, the rest of her story shows that Israel was saved. We don't know the people we may save from heartache and pain and rejection. How many people have walked away from church because of what's been said to them? How many can we redeem and bring back into the kingdom? Esther had to be willing to surrender her position, her life. But she gave hope and she put it into action. This is for all of us. We are here for a purpose. You have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. You are in this, on this planet, in this generation, in this city, in this church for a purpose. And yeah, we may feel like an uh, unqualified savior. We may not feel we can bring that deliverance. But as we've been studying in Judges on Wednesday night, all of the judges were people who you would not expect to be able to lead and deliver Israel. Esther is someone who you would not expect to be able to deliver Israel. God works through those who are willing. And as we're willing, we can make a difference in our world. And after a year of being shut down, it's time to rekindle the hope for our community, rekindle this task that God has set before us to remember why did God put us here in the first place, to rise up and reach our community for the kingdom of God. Are we ready for that challenge? Let's pray. God, we know it's been a rough year, and we know it's been a struggle to transition of not only our location, but also just transition in our world. And now that things are starting to transition back, God, restore unto us that vision, that goal that you placed upon us. God, we ask that you put within each heart here those tasks of which we can do. And even if we feel our task is, is simple or not that important, we know that together it becomes a great sense of work, of work as we work together in the kingdom of God. Lord, we know there are people who walk by these doors every day that are unaware of your love and your grace and acceptance. So God, give us that ability to reach out, that wisdom of even having new and fresh ideas of how to let other people know. God, we ask that you let us be a beacon to our community, that we be able to reach beyond just L.A., but God, even as with the Internet, how we can go around the world, that you give us that wisdom, that understanding, that guidance, and Lord, that you encourage each one to rise up and do their, what they can for your kingdom. And Lord, as we offer ourselves to you, we want to be that ray of hope. We want to give hope to people around us, we want to be people of prayer. We want to be people who are seeking you for what it is that you have for us to do. And then step out and do those tasks. So God, I ask that you encourage our hearts, that you open up those doors, that you provide understanding. And God, even unique ideas, wisdom of things that only you could help us take and operate for our community. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this time we'll take prayer requests. So um, we got a few. Uh, Bobby's roommate called, discovered he has cancer this week, and so he's asking for prayer for, um, for uh, his roommate, for Paul, and, um, and also for Bobby as he's having to be the caretaker as well at this time. Uh, for Kaylee, uh, they're waiting for more information about her health issues, or Kylie. Um, and Catherine's son, like someone, oh, it's, oh, Kat, the other Catherine, okay. I'm like, Catherine did have a son, okay, got it. <laughs> Samuel and, and Hope said her son will open the door of, heart, of his heart to Christ, and um, for her cousin who's been hospitalized with cancer, and, and for Sherry and Catherine as well. Um, Sherry had surgery on Friday and is recuperating, so just ask God's blessing upon them. Uh, any requests here that you'd like us to provide in prayer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone said Amanda, who uh, suffers from pelvic tilting and has a concussion at home. Oof, okay. Yeah, okay. Amanda. What was her name again? I'm sorry. Amanda. Amanda. Okay. All right. Well, let's go to God in prayer. God, we thank you that we can bring our request to you, and we bring Amanda before you now, God, that you be with her in uh, this 
result that happened from having COVID, Lord, we ask that you bring healing to her body, you bring wholeness, that as she goes through her liver transplant, oh God, that you bring the, the right uh, donor, that you allow things to go well for her and that you help her body to accept this uh, transplant and that she be able to live a long and healthy life. God, we just ask that you be with her in, in spirit and in strength and encouragement, bring those around her to support her. And God, um, we can't imagine how fearful it must be for her. So God, we ask that you give peace, that you have peace within her heart and life. And God, we do pray for Paul and uh, as he's dealing with this diagnosis of cancer and is obviously concerned and the things he's going to go through. We ask that you be with him and give him health and strength. And for Bobby, who's um, now a designated caretaker to help, we ask that you help him with the stress and the things that are going to come alongside as he helps uh, this, uh, this friend of his, oh God, as he helps his roommate. And God, we just ask that you be with that house. And for Kylie, we ask that you be with her as she waits for this new information regarding her health. We ask for continued healing in her body. Lord, continue strength for her, O oh Lord, and that you minister um, peace to her. And Lord, for the family, that you encourage them as well. And we ask for the continued miracle to happen in her life. And for Catherine's son, Samuel, we ask, O oh God, that you touch his heart. You know what he's dealing with. You know what he's going through. And that um, as a mom, she's concerned about where he is with you. And God, we just ask that you open up those uh, his heart, open up, open up the doors of opportunity for others to speak to him and minister to him, to give him that hope and understanding of who he can be in you. And for her cousin who is in the hospital with cancer, we also pray that you be with her, that you be with this cousin, that give strength and wholeness and health. And God, we just ask that you minister to her cousin. And Lord, you know other requests that may not have been presented to us, but we bring them before you and ask, O oh God, that you work in each of our hearts, each of our lives. Guide us, O oh Lord. Direct us and strengthen us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we do have a few announcements. First of all, no more reservations. So, yay. Yeah. You only have to have your temperature checked. Uh, so we'll, we have having that coming up. Uh, Encourage you to, if you haven't been here yet, uh, now's your opportunity. You don't have to worry about, oh, I didn't get my reservation in. You can show up. We are going to ask that masks be continue to be worn for a few more weeks um, or until they'll give us some guidance as we go along. So uh, just be aware of that. Also to know that Father's Day is next week. Um, Melissa is putting together a, another video clip for us. So if you would like to have the photo of your dad sent or included, be sure and send it to her email address. If you uh, aren't able to get that written down in time, you can contact the church office and we'll be sure and get that to you. And also at uh, one o'clock today, there is going to be a pride service. Um, uh, there, it's going to be on YouTube. So again, there's the URL. Hopefully you can um, catch that in time if you're interested in being a part of true interfaith of all the various LGBTQ churches or houses of worship. Uh, coming together so if you'd like to be a part of that and also then we have our Bible study on Wednesday night it's at 6 30 uh, we're still going through the book of Judges we're talking about uh, Samson so he's a fun character so you may want to join us for that and you can jump in at any time even if you haven't been a part of it and should be able to catch up pretty easy and then also for donations uh, online, we give you some ways of PayPal, through the bank, through AutoPay, a mail a check, however you want to do it. But if you're here, there's a box in the back uh, that's over by the window as you checked in. So if you'd like to uh, donate and help us, because we are needing to continue this ministry and work, and uh, just so thankful for everything that you've done to help us be sustained through this last year and knowing that it's going to continue on. And also know that we are starting to raise money for the building fund. There are going to be some things that obviously you see not everything's together yet. We still got stuff to do. Uh, we're needing funds to help us do that. So we're looking at 10000 to start. We'll be having another project as soon as we know what it's going to take to, to do some of the other stuff we want to do. But for now, we're looking at that just to get the basics of us getting pulled together. Um, we're well on our way with that, Mark. But encourage you to help us. To help reach our community and these things will help us do that so if you can dig a little deeper maybe make a monthly commitment that will help us with the task that's ahead for that as well so at this time i'm going to turn the service over to the music team again as they lead us out in song and if you want to stand and sing with them feel free to do so
Hopefully we can see some of you next week as well. Thank you so much. For